Hi, Achim from Inner Space Explorers. Today it's all about argon systems. So I basically want to show you two different systems, methods of how you can attach an argon system to your doubles and why I do it the way I show you. And uh, of course I want to talk a little bit about the need for an argon system. Um, as you can say, both of these tanks have argon on it. In fact, I normally have air in them. So the reason I have argon on them is just there might be argon in it or a mixture of argon and air. Obviously, I don't want anybody to breathe that because that could be fatal. So if you have kids in the house, you want to make sure these are stored away and they have no access to them. All right. Um, as I just said, normally I have air in these. The reason is if you want to use argon as an additional form of isolation and to prevent you from getting cold on a dive, especially on a, on a trimix dive, a longer trimix dive with a high helium content, it does not help if you put your suit on, fill this thing with argon, start your dive and then just start filling. Um, because what you basically do is you just add a little bit of argon to the air in your suit. To make this efficient, you would have to flush the suit. So we've done that in the past. I can remember a couple of really cold cave dives where you have a big argon bottle in the car, you fill your suit with argon, you dump it, which means you squeeze all of it out, you fill it again, you squeeze it out, you fill it again, and then at some point, after like three times, you have argon in your suit. So now, it's the same thing as if you would do a normal dive where you just put your suit on so you have air in the suit and then you just compensate when you go deeper for the fact that the water compresses the air in your suit and you want to stay comfortable and without a squeeze. So in that case now the suit would be filled with argon and now you just add a little bit of argon for what you need. But if you don't do that it's just a little bit of argon and a lot of air and it doesn't work. So there's been quite a few interesting tests. If I remember correctly, it was the Swedish Navy that did some tests where they told people, like, I don't know, 100 divers, and like, okay, you have argon, you have air, and afterwards they asked them. So there was a lot of placebo, a lot of people that were, were told that uh, you're diving argon, but like, yeah, yeah, it was much warmer, but in fact it was air and the other way around. So, um, yeah, unless you really flush the suit, there's no real big difference and it doesn't really benefit you. Um, yeah, let's have a look at these two systems and I'll just show you how I mount them and why I mount them the way I do. All right, so the first method is the six cubic feet tank. Um, and normally you mount it on the back plate with these so-called argon straps. The interesting thing is these normally come in pairs, which means if you do it my way, you can share a pair of these with a friend because you only need one. So if you take two of these and mount them here, the problem is always that the tank's gonna slide out. Especially when they're new and they haven't been wet yet, um, they tend to expand a little bit and let the tank go. So what I do is always use one in the middle, basically in the middle of the um, storage pack. And uh, the reason for that is I wanna mount that tank as low as possible because if you mount it like that, which I see a lot, first of all, um, the thing interferes with your arms, so it actually goes a little bit into your armpit. And the most important thing is that it interferes with your hip D-ring, which especially if you dive stages, but also with the SPG, is a bit of a nightmare. Now, especially if you put um, the first stage here on top, you have the holes and everything, that does not work. So, or at least makes it uh, quite uncomfortable. So what I do is, I mount it as low as possible, so it basically flushes this, and then I use a bungee here. Oh, it's not really bungee here anymore. Maybe it has a couple of dives too much. Um, and then I basically attach it like that. It's a perfect, perfect example now. Um, basically, it doesn't matter how you do that. It's just you want to make sure that uh, this spongy cord here prevents the tank from sliding. So it can't go down here any further, but it still has a little bit of flexibility, which means, um, especially if you squeeze somewhere through, whatever, it's not like bolted to the tank, right? So the other thing is the valve is 
uh, proper distance away from your hip D-ring and now when you mount your organ first stage it is important that the holes goes underneath your hip uh, strap because that way it again doesn't interfere with your bolt snap from your SPG or anything else when you start diving stages so you have a clean D-ring and no issues with that. I mean if you picture it being somewhere here if this is mounted too high that's not comfortable so that's the way to go. So a lot of people ask me when do you use that? Well that's my standard set of gear so down to 50 60 meters um, that's fine for a dive. I fill it to 100, uh, 200 bars um, and even on a, on a 60 meter dive unless it's a lot of up and downs I'm still good with 50, 60 bars when I come out. Um, the reason a lot of people struggle with that is because a lot of people that I see dry suit divers use their dry suit for buoyancy compensation and that's obviously wrong. You only need the amount of gas uh, that you don't have a squeeze and the suit feels comfortable. So if you struggle in the beginning with that, what I always recommend, unplug this one. So the reason is you start thinking about when you let gas in so you feel like ah oh, I need some gas you take it you plug it in you press you unplug it not for diving I'm talking about practicing so when you want to get used to that that's a good way of doing it obviously you don't want to unplug this on a real dive don't get me wrong here don't uh, do any fancy things but when you start diving a dry suit and you get the feeling that you tend to uh, compensate your buoyancy with the dry suit instead of the wing, that's a good exercise in the quarry around the corner um, to get a better feel for that. Do I really need that? Yeah, I need to plug it in. All right, let's have a look at the other method. So the other method, you need these straps and you use a bigger tank. That's 14 cubic feet tank. And be careful, the, a lot of these is low pressure. So this is 2015 PSI, which is roughly 140 bars. So be careful, make yourself a note, and especially when you give these to a dive center. I mean, in the United States, that's relatively common. So people know how to handle these. But if you're in Europe, a lot of people do not know about these low pressure tanks. So you don't want the dive center to give this a proper cave fill with 200 plus bars. So more than 3000 PSI and uh, have this thing explode, so be careful. Nevertheless, that's a proper argon tank because it's basically neutral in the water and it does not shift the weight on your tanks. So now the question is, how do we attach this? So it goes on the side of the tanks, but first of all, you don't want this high. Again, when you look at that, that gives a very bulky line, basically. So the further you move this down, the smoother the, the uh, surface basically becomes and gives you a better streamlining. The same thing goes when you look at this from the top. I hope you can see that from that camera angle. But a lot of times I see the argon tank in that position. So <laughs> that's not where you want to have it, especially when you go cave or wreck diving or whatever. This is where you will bump into something and you will either get stuck, damaged, uh, cave or you actually ruin your gear so you obviously want this as far in as possible right i mean obviously <laughs> not to a point where it interferes with the back plate and with your body and with the wing but somewhere reasonable so that would be exactly on the side i tend to go a little bit further in so roughly in that position i hope you can see that from from the camera angle um, but that's what gives you a proper streamline. And then I take it down all the way till the valve is basically flush with the bottom of the tanks. And again, with the um, argon stage mounted, um, it goes underneath the, with the waist belt, the hose is away, and the D-ring then would roughly, I'll show you that in a second. So you would put your back plate here, Right, it does not interfere. Perfect. So that's the proper half height. So it does not interfere with your deering on the side. So that's the way to mount it. Um, and I'll just quickly show you how this is done. So you have two of these straps. One of them has a bungee. 
which again prevents the uh, tank from sliding down. Would actually be a great addition if you have the regular argon straps. But as I said, if you um, share them with a friend, that's actually even cheaper. Um, so now you put these on top. And when I say on top, I mean this part here goes to the front of the tank. The reason is you basically secure it with your back plate, right? It's Velcro, you put that in here, and when you screw down the back plate, that actually holds the strap in place and provides, uh, prevents it from sliding or, or opening. So again, when you look at this from the top, you can actually see this is the side of the tank and I moved it a little bit forward. So, the second one. Align properly. And get that in. And now the back plate presses it in place. And now our tank goes down like that. When you mount it while it's standing, you actually have perfect reference of how low you can go. And then this one goes around the valve. And then you have this mounted perfectly. And the first stage goes here. To your inlet and then you will put your wing and your back plate on top. I'm not mounting this now, I guess you've seen the back plate. And obviously that strap would go um, because otherwise that would be in the way. So remember you only take what you need and this one goes underneath your waist strap. Alright, I hope that answered the question and showed you a little bit of how to mount your argon system and why you want to uh, mount it that way. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. If you subscribe, please hit that little notification bell so you get a notification when we upload new content, which normally is on the weekend, once a week. Other than that, please take care of yourself, stay safe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.